I'm John Belitis, and I'm a labor and employment attorney with the law firm of Fenimore Craig in Phoenix. And today I want to talk briefly about the concept of unpaid workers. Now that summer's here and schools are on break, many businesses may consider supplementing their regular staff with unpaid workers. Employers, though, in many cases don't understand that some fairly strict criteria apply to the relationship between a business and an unpaid worker. Employers simply can't bring people on and have them work for free, even if they agree to work for free in advance, because federal law in most instances entitles workers to compensation, whether they realize it or not, and whether they agree at the beginning of the relationship to work for free. Um, we've seen liability develop in this area recently with some fairly high profile employers who have treated one or more individuals improperly in this context as unpaid workers. And once these individuals have left the workplace and realize that they were entitled to compensation all along, they've brought claims. And of course, these claims and the liability associated with them can grow exponentially if you're talking not just about one unpaid worker, but about a group of them. The confusion, I think, in this area stems from the fact that in the charitable, religious, and civic contexts, we have the concept of a bona fide volunteer, meaning uh, someone who donates their time, works for free, doesn't have an expectation of being paid, isn't paid, and doesn't have a legal right to compensation. That's lawful. But in the private sector, we don't really have the equivalent of a volunteer. What we have in the private sector is the concept of an unpaid worker, or what we refer to uh, most often as an unpaid intern. Now, in order for one of these relationships to work so that the individual is not entitled to compensation for the work he or she performs, the employer simply needs to follow some very straightforward criteria that we find in the Fair Labor Standards Act. The relationship really needs to look more like an educational experience than a job. It must benefit the intern and not the employer. The intern shouldn't displace uh, regular staff and in fact should be supervised by a regular employee in the workplace. The employer shouldn't derive any immediate benefit from what the worker does. And in fact, in some cases, the employer's business is impeded because the employer has to devote a regular employee to supervising the unpaid intern. Finally, the unpaid intern shouldn't have an expectation of receiving a job at the end of the relationship. And the parties really should agree upfront in writing that the individual will not be compensated for his or her work. The takeaway for our clients and employers generally in this is that if you are considering creating one of these relationships, either during the summer or during the course of the year, you should consult with counsel, reduce the relationship in terms of its terms to writing, and make sure that those terms follow the criteria that we've discussed in the Fair Labor Standards Act. If you follow these criteria and create the relationship this way, you will avoid wage and hour liability that could be associated with a regular employment relationship, even though you intended to really create an unpaid internship.